Okay, so I usually like to just get right into the tutorial without any kind of intro, but I needed to say this first. This is not an absolute beginner's tutorial. I'm assuming you're familiar with the tools on the toolbar, you know how to keyframe, and you know how to add simple expressions to properties. If you know these things, then great, we can get started. If you don't know about those things, then I'm going to suggest you go learn about those things first because you got a few things to learn before you try to start tackling a walk cycle. So go learn those things and then come back to this video. Okay, with all that being said and out of the way, let's get started. Okay, to start off, we're gonna have a body layer and a head layer, and then I'm gonna parent my head layer to my body. Alrighty, so the first thing I'll do is I'll shorten my work area, and I like to start with two seconds as my starting point. Then I'm gonna select my body layer and smash that P button to bring up the position properties. Then I'm going to vigorously click on that stopwatch to add keyframes to the beginning, middle, and end of my work area. And I'm going to split the difference between those three keyframes and add two more keyframes. Next, I'm gonna select those two keyframes and I'm gonna nudge my body up a little bit. I'm gonna easy ease those two keyframes and right click on one of my two selected keyframes to bring up the keyframe velocity where I'll change that to about 75. Then I'll select the other keyframes that needs them. And last but not least, I'll add a loop in expression to my position property. This will come in handy later. And there we go, we've set the tempo for our walk cycle. Now, let's move on to the legs. And by legs, I actually mean the feet, because we're gonna keyframe the feet to drive the motion of the legs. My foot is really simple, I just use the pen tool to create a line, and then I'll just cap the ends. And then I'm gonna go up to the toolbar and grab this little nifty pan behind tool, and shift my anchor point to the ankle of the foot, because we want our foot to rotate at the ankle. And next, I'm actually gonna stop everything I'm doing, and always make sure that I'm labeling my layers. So just like with my body, I'm gonna smash that P button, bring up the position, property and I'm going to keyframe my foot. I like to start with the back position and then keyframe the forward position and then I'll copy the back position and paste it at the end of my work area. I always try to keep my first and last keyframes the exact same so that it loops properly. Next I'll right click on the position property and choose separate dimensions. Now I'm going to keyframe the Y position. I usually start in the middle and nudge it back a few frames because the highest part of your step should be slightly behind the body. Next I'll casually hit shift R to bring up the rotation property without hiding my position keyframes. The foot should point down at the highest point of the step and then point up right before it hits the ground and then I'll zero out the angle of the foot a few frames after the foot hits the ground because our heels always hit the ground first and just like with all my other keyframes I'm going to copy and paste the first keyframe to my last frame. Now I'm going to use all these keyframes except for these two keyframes. Keeping these two keyframes linear helps sell the idea that her foot will come to an abrupt stop as it hits the ground. Now I'm going to duplicate my foot layer, put my new foot layer underneath my current layer, and then I'm going to select all the keyframes on that new layer and offset them to halfway through my work area. Now I'll create my limb. I'm using limber, but you can also use rubber hose. It'll give you an ankle and hip controller. I'll parent my ankle to the foot and my hip to my body. And once that's done, I'll just duplicate my limb and then I'll parent my new limb to my other foot. Now would you look at that? We're just about 80% of the way there. All right, let's move on to the arms. Now I'm gonna use limber to set up my arms, but if you don't have limber and just wanna do it manually, you just create two parts of the arm and parent the lower part of the arm to the upper part of the arm, and then you'll just be animating the rotation, making sure that your anchor points are at the joints. Okay, so once you've parented your shoulder to your body, then animating the arm can be broken down into three different phases. First, I'll animate the rotation of the whole arm. Then I'll animate the rotation of the lower portion of the arm. Then I'll finish off by offsetting the lower portion from the top portion so that you get a little bit of overlapping action. Also, it's important to note that there's a little minor detail in the direction your arm should swing. It should always swing the opposite direction of the leg on the same side of the body. And last but not least, just like always, we're gonna add our loop in expression to these keyframed properties. And I'm also gonna ease all these keyframes. And then the process is just like with the legs, we're gonna duplicate the arm and offset it to the middle of our composition. And we're just about done, but I like to add just a little bit of overlapping action with the body. So I will select the body keyframes and offset them one or two frames from the feet. And then I'll add some subtle rotation to the head and offset that from the body. And as you might've guessed, add the loop in expression to my rotation of my head. And there you go, you have a pretty basic walk cycle. All right, that's just a quick breakdown of a basic walk cycle. Uh, if you found that this video was helpful, please consider hitting that like button. It really helps me out, helps this video get in front of more people on YouTube. I don't know, it's a YouTube algorithm thing. And uh, if you didn't think it was very helpful, I don't know, hit the dislike button, or better yet, leave a comment below and explain to me why it was not helpful. I'm always open to that kind of feedback but you know be nice 
And if you like this content and you want more content like this in the future, consider subscribing. And just like every other YouTuber says, if you do subscribe, hit that little bell gizmo so that you're alerted every time I upload a new video. And uh, with that being said, that's all I have for today's video. So we'll see you guys on the next video.